Discover how this girl named Ellie, in her dreams becomes a diva and enjoys life, but in an instant she becomes a murderer and mercilessly kills men to take revenge. Welcome to Worth Recap, this time I show you the summary of the movie last night in Soho. It all starts with Ellie Turner, a young woman who loves the music and fashion of the swinging 60s, and dreams of becoming a fashion designer. Her mother, also a designer, committed suicide during Ellie's childhood. Ellie occasionally sees the ghost of her mother in her mirrors and she can see and feel things other people can't. Ellie lives with her grandmother and one day she receives the letter of acceptance to study at the London College of Fashion, that same day she packs all her things and the grandmother warns her to beware of the bad people that may be in London. The next day grandma says goodbye to Ellie and gives her a photo of her mother so she won't forget her. Ellie moves to London where she will live in a shared residence with several students. In London she takes a taxi to get to her bedroom before her, but on the way the taxi driver starts harassing her and she immediately gets out and walks to the residence. There she meets her partner Joe Costa, they start talking about her lives discovering that they both lost their mothers at an early age, and that her personalities are very different. Shortly after Jocasta goes out to a party and not to be alone, Ellie follows her, Jocasta at the party makes very inappropriate comments and tries to make Ellie look bad, that's why Ellie leaves the party and stays in the bathroom, shortly after Jocasta and her friends enter the same bathroom and start badmouthing Ellie. Ellie, feeling that she does not fit in with the people she is dating, decides to return to her bedroom to sleep, when she is disturbed by the noise of the party that Jocasta brought to the bedroom, in the middle of the party she meets John, another student who tries to help her. The next day Ellie falls asleep and is late for class so she is left without a group of friends, while walking alone she finds an ad where an apartment is rented, Ellie is unhappy where she currently lives and for that reason she calls the number to discuss the apartment, and promptly moves into a room at the estate of elderly Alexandra Collins. That night, Ellie has a vivid dream in which she is transported back in time to the 1960s, walks for a while, and arrives at the Café de Paris, where she sees a confident young blonde named Sandy and asks the bartender for help. The owner of the bar, the bartender wants to know why he is looking for him and she tells him that she wants to become a singer in the club, the bartender does not know where the owner is, but advises him to talk to Jack. Sandy talks to Jack with a very daring attitude which impresses him and ends up getting along very well. To the point of kissing, at the end of that night they both agree to meet again for a date and Sandy returns to the same room where she stays Ellie, and when Sandy goes to sleep Ellie wakes up. The next morning, Ellie designs a dress inspired by Sandy and discovers a hickey on her neck. At night Ellie has another dream in which Sandy auditions for the Soho nightclub, organized by Jack and is accepted. Then they leave the club and Sandy asks Jack to be her manager and he accepts, and they both end up making love. So Ellie, inspired by these dreams, dyes her hair blonde, changes her fashion style to match Sandy's, and uses it as inspiration for her dress designs. She also gets a job in a bar near the university, during her work she is observed by a silver-haired man, who recognizes her similarities with Sandy and asks her about her mother, and when she finds out that she died, she answers that it was to be expected since most died, then Ellie leaves confused by what she heard. That night, Ellie discovers that Sandy is not living the life she expected, since she discovers that all the artists in that place sell their bodies to get more fame and Jack begins to prostitute Sandy, in the same way that the other women who wanted fame, Jack offers Sandy to his male business associates. In the morning Ellie is disturbed by what she saw in her dream and wants to destroy her work based on Sandy, but her teacher stops her and after school John her classmate goes to his work and tries to help her, but Ellie just tells him that okay, after work Ellie runs into the same man who asked about her mother and he tries to flirt with her. She returns to her room where she dreams of Sandy trapped in a life of constant parties and men's jobs, then she begins to experience the dream as if she were Sandy and to run away from that experience she stays in college to avoid going to her room. 
There John finds her and invites her to a Halloween party, Ellie accepts and they go to the party together, however the spirits that torment her in her room appear at the party and she leaves the place. John follows her and after a few words of comfort Ellie kisses him and then invites him to her apartment to make love, when they get to the room and start with the romance, before getting to the good stuff, Ellie has a vision of Jack murdering Sandy and Ellie pushes John away who is taken out of the house by the owner. In the morning Ellie attends college normally and there she begins to see Sandy's bloodied spirit along with the people who tormented her. Not knowing what to do, she goes to the police and tells them what she saw in her dreams, but they don't take her seriously, except for a woman who asks for more information in order to open a case. Ellie tries to find newspaper reports of Sandy's murder in the university library but is unsuccessful, instead finding stories of local men who disappeared without a trace, soon after John arrives who overhears her story and offers to help her and she asks him to look up missing women cases. After John leaves the spirits manifest again, Ellie flees the place but is cornered, in a panic she tries to stab the spirit but before she does, she is stopped by John since she almost stabbed Jocasta. Ellie believing that the old man who flirted with her in the bar is Jack, Ellie leaves the university and goes to the bar where she finds him and starts a conversation about the women he met, but when Ellie mentions Sandy the man replies that she got what he had. What he deserved this comment annoys Ellie and confronts the man stating that he killed Sandy, however angry the man denies having killed Sandy as he leaves the bar, Ellie follows him and continues accusing him but he continues to deny the accusations, while they argue he stops at middle of the street and is run over. The owner of the place comes out to see what happened and reveals that the man's name is Lindsay, and Ellie remembers meeting him in her dreams, he was an undercover officer who tried to help Sandy escape her life of prostitution. Devastated, Ellie decides to leave London and asks John to give her a ride and he accepts, but before leaving London she asks him to take her to her apartment to inform Mrs. Collins that she is leaving, and she asks John if he doesn't come out in 15 minutes, he's going to come get her. Ellie enters the apartment and talks to Mrs. Collins and tells her that she is leaving London because she can't stand this place anymore, Mrs. Collins reassures her and tells her to have some tea, then mentions that a detective came to ask about the murder of a girl in that apartment, although after a short chat she left, then she remembers that a girl did die in that room revealing that she is actually Sandy. She explains that while living in that room she had to kill Sandy more than a hundred times, so as not to feel the hell she lived in every day, until one night Jack threatened her with a knife, however she took the knife and stabbed him. Over a hundred times, that act made her feel great. Then she thought if all men gave her hell she will give them hell too, so she lured the men who had ever touched her back into her room and killed them, hiding their bodies in the floorboards and the walls of the room. House Walls At the end of the story Mrs. Collins tells Ellie that she knows she won't reveal what she heard to anyone else, Ellie swears she won't, but she reveals that she drugged Ellie's tea, and intends to kill her. To ensure his silence by passing it off as suicide. However, before she can do anything John knocks on Mrs. Collins's door, she is furious to see a man take a knife and goes to the door, Ellie tries to stop her but Mrs. Collins hits her causing a cigarette but falls into a container with paper. Collins opens the door and lets John in and stabs him. Ellie sees the scene and tries to help John, but being drugged she is easily knocked down. Ellie tries to flee upstairs and Collins chases after her, Meanwhile the downstairs begins to catch fire from the cigarette butt. Ellie manages to get to her room and locks herself in, there the spirits of the murdered people begin to come out of the places where Sandy hid her bodies, and ask her for help inciting her to kill Collins, but she refuses. Mrs. Collins walks into Ellie's room, and she also sees the spirits who are frightened by her presence, except the ghost of Jack who slaps her saying that she wanted this. Collins replies that she didn't want any of this and with the police outside, she tries to cut her throat to avoid going to prison, but Ellie stops her and tells her that she can still be saved, that's why she has to live but Mrs. Collins tells Ellie to save herself and John from the growing fire. Ellie out of options runs to John and they are saved by the police while Sandy remains in the building as she burns. 
Sometime later, Ellie shows off her clothes in a 60s-inspired fashion show that results in a hit. After her parade her grandmother and John, now her boyfriend, congratulate her backstage, then she sees Sandy's spirit who says goodbye to her. Thanks for watching the video, please subscribe for more videos like this. If you wanted to see more, I recommend this Korean action movie.